coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to another C++ Lego 5 platformer tutorial. I know you haven't heard my voice in a while. Uh, if you haven't watched my update videos, I've been very busy. I've been working a lot. Uh, I've already worked um, like 40 something hours this week and I... Uh, I still have to go to work tonight and tomorrow, but I decided to uh, make uh, This tutorial for you guys because uh, I haven't made one in a while. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So what we have so far is We got our player moving around the screen. We can jump blah 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 and so on and so forth and it's cool, but uh, there's no a platformer doesn't really become a a platformer a platform doesn't really become alive unless you really have enemies or or whatever right not all platformers really need enemies but majority of them do have enemies so we're gonna be implementing enemies uh, within the next couple of tutorials and I hope it's easy for you guys to understand so we are gonna be adding a brand new class and this class is going to be called the enemy class as you guys probably figured so we are going to be including the entity entity if I can spell and we are going to be inheriting from the entity class so what we're going to do to speed up the process is we're just going to go to entity.h quickly and we'll just copy this And what we will do is just remove the virtual, or you can just do Control H using Visual Studio. I know you probably might not be able to see this, but just remove the virtual like so. So it makes life easier in that sense. So we'll copy this, go to our enemy.cpp, we'll paste this in here. Set this up real quick and don't forget the scope operator so they're part of the enemy class okay so that's done and I don't know why I'm getting an error oh I put a semicolon right there so yeah everything should be fine yep so everything is fine so in our what we're going to do now is in our we're going to go to our player.h we are going to take all this stuff right here all these things sorry all of these except for the jump speed and the player image and i'm going to cut that and we are going to paste it in the protected portion of our entity.h now we're going to take the direction and we're going to put that in the public section okay so now that we've gotten that done we're going to want to go back to our entity.cpp and we're going to be adding something to our our load content so we're going to say else if attributes i is equal to direction then uh we want to check which direction they inputted so if contents i is equal to right then we want to set our direction equal to uh, direction if I can type right else if contents I equals to left then we want to set the direction equal to left okay so we're just going to type in the name of the direction or whatever in our text file if it's set to right then we're going to set the direction to right if it's if we type in left it's going to set the direction to left okay so to continue on we will just add in 
uh, our move speed. So if attributes I is equal to move speed, then we'll set move speed equal to uh, ATOF, and that's our contents I. Oh, dot C underscore string. So that is we're gonna be getting the direction the move speed from our text file so um all this should be pretty straightforward we're gonna put entity load content so attributes contents and uh we'll just set our gravity equal to one and we will set we'll say our animation dot is active is equal to true so with our unload content we're just gonna make a call to entity unload content and in our updates what we're going to do is well yeah there is something that something else that we forgot I knew I was forgetting something we're gonna have to add in uh, the range and we're gonna save attributes I is equal to range then we will set range equal to ATOI contents I dot C underscore string. And what the range is is going to tell us uh, how far or how, yeah, how far an enemy should in fact move. So, well, in the way I'm going to, the way I'm going to be doing it, it's not actually going to dictate how far. It's gonna move, but you can manipulate it how you want it to go. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. So, oh, also in the entity.h, we have to include sprite sheet animation dot h. Okay, so if we go back to our enemy.cpp and our update, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna say that if direction is equal to direction right, then our velocity dot first is going to be equal to move speed else if direction equals to direction left our velocity dot first so is going to be equal to negative move speed simple enough and what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the player class and we can just take all of this right here take all this from the player class and paste it in here and at the top we have to say previous positions equal to position at the top so this is going to handle all our position stuff updating the animation all that stuff you should already already know what it does but what we're going to be doing at the bottom is we're going to say counter plus plus and we never created a counter variable yet so we'll just create one in our enemy uh, dot dot h in the private section and we'll just count, call this counter so we'll say in the load content our counter will be equal to zero and right here we'll say that if counter is greater than or equal to our range then we're gonna reset counter equal to zero and if the direction of the player was right then we're gonna set the new direction to left else we're gonna set the new direction To write so once it hits the range right and this is the reason why I specify that it's not gonna be actually how far they reach in the game world the counter is gonna increment by one each time once it reaches the range whatever the range is then it's gonna hit the it's gonna change the direction it goes so it's not really how far they how many steps they take if you want or if you want to go based on how far they actually reach 
then you can add the you can add the velocity to the counter to see how far they reach and when they reach the range then you can do whatever right and you know what we'll do that way just to make it a bit less confusing so we'll just say counter plus equals velocity dot first so that will give us how far we we should how far right and left we should move uh it within our within our game world okay so uh and also if 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 you wanted to do it like like so so for example let me open up paint.net so this is the way our our movement is going to work and there's a way that there's two different ways you can do this so how it's going to work is our player is going to start at a certain position let's say this is the position sorry let's just say that this is the position our player starts at okay whatever being stupid okay so let's say this is the position our player starts at so it's going to start like this and say the range is 100 it's going to move 100 spaces to the right then move back to the original position it started at right then whatever if the starting direction is left then it's going to go left then back to the starting position then left then back to the starting position if you want to do it like so where this is the origin position and you go towards the right 100 spaces go past the middle left 100 spaces like left to the range back to the middle and so on and so forth then you can do that as well um it's really up to you which which method you want to do it but i'm just going to do it the first method that i talked about and it's up to you if you want to really modify it to do it to do it that way so uh this is going to move uh based on the range that we set it to and everything should be fine right here so all we're going to do is make a call to animation.draw display and we'll be good so i think i have run out of time now Yep, I've run out of time, so I'm going to continue this, and hopefully we'll get our player up and running in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.